Hey, Daniel Nacho's Nacho. crew. This is Paul, Dr. Nacho, and I'm thrilled to be talking with you because I'm talking with a dentist selling his practice right now. This dentist happens to be my friend, Dr. Len Tao. So we're going to talk with him about where his practice is, why he's selling it, a little bit about, more about the story of his practice. Thanks for talking with us, uh, Dr. Len. Share with our whoever's watching here, uh, where's your practice, why are you looking to sell it, and a little of the background story. Uh, thanks for having me, Paul. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Lin Tao. I'm a general dentist in uh, Northeast Philadelphia. Uh, I've been in practice for just over 14 years. Uh, it's a general dental practice. Um, why am I looking to sell? Uh, I've done a lot in my career. Uh, as many of you know, I run the dental division for BirdEye. Um, I teach marketing to dentists all over the country, so I'm a traveling all over, all over the country pre-COVID. So yeah. I, I, have, I, have, I have a dual career, I would say. Um, and many of you may not know, I recently relocated my home to, uh, to Florida. So I live in a different state now. Um, I do commute on a, on a weekly basis. I, I come up on either Sunday night or Monday and I uh, stay up uh, in Philly to, uh, till Wednesday, uh, Wednesday morning or, or Tuesday evening. Um, so I'm kind of a living a different lifestyle now, and uh, I still love dentistry. I know you well, well, and, and you know we've kind of grown up together. Your main motivation for selling your dental practice because you were looking to relocate to a different part of the country with your family is, is that accurate? Yeah, COVID COVID really changed the way I'm looking at life and um, just trying to div live a different lifestyle. And yes, I think the main reason why is you know life changes, and uh, you know I'm looking to the second chapter of my life at this point. And now de selling dental practices or is, you know, can be compared to selling houses. But I heard once, you know, it, when you sell a house, you know, nobody lives with you inside of that house again. When you sell a dental practice, there's this transition time where, you know, you'll be training the new buyer of your practice. So where is your practice and what makes this area attractive? Why did you pick this area when you purchased the practice? So the practice is in, in, in Northeast Philadelphia, but it's extremely close to Philadelphia, uh, in Philadelphia County, but it's in, extremely close to Montgomery and Bucks County. I can see basically from my office, uh, but it's right near 95. So I have patients who travel from almost everywhere to my office. Um, so it's, new, it's a prime location. It's on a busy street, Bustleton Avenue. Um, I'm a fee for service office. I do not accept uh, dental insurance as a, as a uh, you know, I'm not contracted with any, any insurance companies. Um, so prime location, uh, no insurance participation. Um, we do all, uh, all forms of, uh, you know, cosmetic and uh, implant restorations. I, I personally don't do um, any endo or oral surgery. My associate who works a couple of days a week does. Um, so it's a great opportunity for someone who does implants and oral surgery to come in and uh, really uh, enhance the already uh, great opportunity that we have in the office. That's great. I mean, I, I call it, you have good core chips, restorative dentistry, cosmetic dentistry, but there's also an opportunity to add toppings like implant placement, endo, something like that. So you're working four days a week, fee-for-service practice. What are you collecting uh, as an estimate in your practice? Now COVID's, we're back open after COVID. Tell us about your collection since COVID and kind of what people could expect as an estimated collection from your history too. Yeah, one of the great things was after COVID, we really uh, turned on the jets and we've been really doing great after COVID. Um, so we're collecting somewhere between 80 and $90,000 a month. Um, and, um, we are prior to COVID or during COVID, my associate ended up leaving and I hired a new associate. So we are now completely out of, out of network. So our collections are actually up after COVID because of that. Um, so it's even collections are somewhat higher than they were before COVID. Um, and, uh, so between 80 and $90,000 productions are where collections are, are pretty on par with that as well. Our numbers are pretty good. AR is very low, uh, because of that as well. Um, and, uh. You, you developed some really good systems about with case acceptance, finance, but now Len, let's pretend we're back in the beginning, baby age dentist or, you know, toddler age dentist, and <laughs> pretend you were you, and it's not easy to make these huge life decisions. So, you know, we were all nervous about buying a practice, about more than one practice, but now you have confidence that your practice, you know, is doing in the neighborhood of a million dollars a year. It has five operatories. It's all set up for someone to take over. So talk to that buyer who's just nervous, like maybe you were when you bought this practice, and why you think they'll be successful? Well, we have great systems uh, that are already in place that I think once you put, plug another person in, they just keep the existing systems in place that are already there. Um, we have an amazing team that I that want a job. They, they're not going to leave. Uh, I'm not planning to leave, by the way. I would love to stay on for a transition uh, for an indeterminate period of time at this point. 
even to continue stay coming in one week out of the month um, after the six to eight month introductory period. Um, so I'm not planning to just completely disperse and not come back. Um, I do want to continue doing dentistry, just not it's going to be like a, instead of the parent, the practice or as the parent, you'll be Uncle Len. You come in, do your cases, and then you know leave. You're like become the, the friendly uncle to the practice, but that's super valuable because the dentist can ask you so many questions about patients who might, you know, need extra TLC. And also you do some, what are some of the cases you do that are fairly productive that you like to keep doing if you're in the practice? Well, Invisalign, um, I love doing my implant restorations. Uh, I've done a, a lot of all on fours. Um, I, I love restorative dentistry. The cosmetic cases are always fun to do. The, the, the patients love it. Um, but I, I, I love being a mentor. I love educating, you know, that, that's I've transitioned to the education space and, uh, just being able to mentor someone and teach them the business side of dentistry, which is what I really enjoy doing. Um, and, and that's the role I want to take on is being there, answering questions, making sure they understand how the often runs. So it, it's a seamless transition, um, when someone does take over the practice. And that's why, you know, you are in the same uh, boat is, you know, you care what happens to your patients after you mm -hmm. go and you want someone who's going to take good care of them and your team. But just like with parents or anything else, they will be a slightly different leader than you, but they can rely on you to learn from your leadership skills, things you've done in the practice. And I just think anyone who's watching and listening, that's a super unique opportunity to be able to have regular contact with the practice owner, not just on the phone, not just on FaceTime, but also physically in the office to, you know, be mentored, like you say, and, and keep up these cases. I think that's awesome one. As long as I am, you know, on the website, as long as, you know, I, I'm part of the practice still in some capacity, the patients are not going to just leave because they know I'm connected to the practice in some way, shape or form. Um, that's all that's going to take to continue the practice the way it is. That's well, the most important thing. Awesome. I always say the story is the star. It's a great story. What you have here, five operatory practice, million dollars a year system to take over, to reach out to us where we are. You can email transitions at dentalnachos.com transitions at dentalnachos.com. You can call also call us at 267-896-4886. I'm also going to let you let Len say how you can connect with him. So if you have any questions about this transition, I think this is an awesome opportunity. It's only 30 minutes for me, so we can have nachos at Elvez too, like Len and I have done in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, Len, how can someone reach out to you directly, email, sell, if they want to talk more? These people are people who have signed an NDA. They're interested in the practice. They want to get updated numbers know about what's going on, have more questions. How can they reach out to you? So the best place to reach out to me, you can easily call my cell phone. Um, it's 215-292-2100. And then I have an email address that's specifically for the sale of the practice. And that's Philly Dental Office, the number four, sale at gmail.com. And I'll repeat it one more time. It's Philly Dental Office office, the number four, sale at gmail.com. Awesome, Len. Well, I've enjoyed, you know, I, 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 I miss you in Florida, but now with COVID, it's like we're on FaceTime anyway, and you'll be coming back uh, to the area to hang out. So thanks for sharing your story with us. I think this is an awesome opportunity for a dentist who wants to take over and do what you've done, but also still stay connected to you. Really appreciate it. And thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it as well.